Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Car Stylist. This is tip number six, primitive blockout, blocking in a model using a low poly primitive in ZBrush. Now with the primitive blockout, there's no need to worry about edge flow. And you can see form and proportion quite easily, which really makes it a perfect tool for investigating new form. So today we're going to look at making a seat and see where it takes us. So the first thing to do is to create a primitive polysphere. And you want to do that by pressing the comma key and bringing down the light box. Pick the polysphere ZTL, drag it out on the screen, press shift D to decrease the subdivision levels, and then bring up your perspective uh, and your floor. You can do that by pressing either shift P or P. Now it's not low enough, so you're going to have to go to, that is a subdivision level, so go to geometry or to geometry and delete those subdivision levels and then go ahead and press reconstruct about two times, three times to get it to this point. Then go back up to the same location and delete those subdivision levels. And so now you're ready to go and move on to modeling. Okay, now it's time to begin modeling. Bring out your move to, uh, that's B, M, V, and begin shaping your model so that it is reflective of your design intent. At this point, uh, and this is really great for the primitive type modeling, just worry about the basic structure, the basic frame massing of your design. Don't be concerned about details, uh, the smaller shapes. And again, this is where this method shines because it prevents you from really looking at the uh, detail. You have the basic planes of the, the uh, design, as you can see in the seat design that is taking shape, the basic planes of the design, but you can't go too much more than the basic planes and perspectives and shapes. So continue to do this until uh, your design intent begins to take shape. Okay, at some point you'll need to create additional geometry by extruding a shape. Do this by first masking off the area that you want to extrude, the face that you want to extrude. I go to uh, mask, lasso, and then inverting that. W to bring up the transpose to, and then clicking on the face, that'll set it to its normal, and then the middle circle, and shift control, and that'll bring out or extrude the shape. Continue shaping the model as usual. It's just that simple. You can duplicate a mesh within the same layer or sub two with the transpose two. Click on the W key, bring up the transpose two, click on the middle circle and control and you can drag out another mesh. And because the mesh is uh, mask and you don't really see the mask, you can go ahead and reproportion that new mesh without affecting uh, the previous mesh, as you can see here. Now, if I were to control D and subdivide this uh, model right now, it would be a melted blob. I'll have to add some edge loops in order to define edges. Do this by first isolating the geometry in which you want to put the uh, edge loop on. Go to your two geometry edge loop and edge loop and make sure the crisp is activated and you can see that there's a small edge loop around that edge of the selected geometry. Now if I bring back the hidden geometry and subdivide it by pressing control D you'll see that I have a very tight crease or edge loop which defines the edge. Now another method of creating tighter 
geometry or edge loops is to use a slice tube. Do this by shift control and going up to your left hand corner and picking out the slice tube. Or you can just say B and find the slice tube. And slice uh, the geometry where you need tighter corners. It's the same sort of principle, uh, but you can put the slice exactly where you want it. And in some cases, this is exactly what you need in order to achieve the effect. So now we have uh, a model with the creases and the areas that we need. And so now we can go further. Okay, I want to add some detail uh, to this seat by using the extract function, that is to add uh, another layer of surface on it. Do this by first creating uh, the area using your mask tools. You can spend as much time as you like. Once you've done that, you want to go to your, your sub 2 list over on your right hand corner. Go down to the Extract to, and then press Extract. And so you can see an additional surface created. Now that surface is not permanent until you go and press Accept down there at the bottom. So now you have this additional surface uh, panel, if you will, on top, riding on top of the previous surface. Now you can adjust the thicknesses and um, whether they go through the surface, below the surface, um, or on top of the surface by the controls in the extract function. And now I am going to smooth it out with the deformation tool. And so now I have this additional uh, panel that floats on top of the original surface. So I'm going to take this a little bit further by taking this panel that I've created, duplicating it, and using it to perform a Boolean operation, changing first the mesh into DynaMesh, subtracting this mesh from the original seat mesh, and so getting these separate uh, forms and shapes. Do this also with the, the bottom. And uh, now I've got some detail bringing back the, the original panel and uh, putting some color on it and calling it a day. So uh, there's a lot more you can do with this seat, a lot more detail that I can throw in it, but uh, the essence of this particular video is for the primitive, and uh, we can go into the other later. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.